What's up everybody? So it has probably been a couple months or so, maybe a few months since I last made a spreadsheet video. And since then I have added and changed a lot of things, so I wanted to make another video here and kind of re-go over everything and see what's changed, show other people, you know, some of the things that they could be paying attention to that they maybe skipped over and whatnot, and probably find some more things going through this myself to uh, kind of help my edge out and whatnot. So. I'm just going to go right from the start here, starting again from the top left. Obviously, this is where I put all my data in. Um, an X means that it was that kind of trade. I got my high of day breakouts, just uh, regular breakouts down, breakout up. Um, I definitely double tagged some of these, so I got a low a day and it was a breakout down. In some cases, um, a low a day breakout, or no, a wall breakout would, would not necessarily be a low of day breakout, so this breakout down might not necessarily be at its low of day so I need to find the uh, discrepancies in between those to see you know maybe a low of day breakouts performing better or you know vice versa so I've got tons of data here um, uh, these are my error trades just in case anything ever shows up I'm trying to keep track of how if if I ever make any mistakes in a trade I would want to mark it as an error so that I can see just exactly how much money I'm losing just because of my error trade. Say I accidentally click the buy button or accidentally do double size, you know, maybe I forget to take my partial or something and then it turns around being a loser, well that's an error trade. <clears throat> and obviously I don't want to, you know, have tons of those, but if it happens, it happens and it's something I need to pay attention to. So we got the symbol, the day of the week, the confidence rating that I give the trade, the time of day, what the market is doing at that time so this for instance would be the spy is at a minus one usually that in for probably around I don't know minus point two and then somewhere towards close to one would be like a three and then anything close to two would be a four and then anything that threes would be a five got a short and a long the number of shares I took the risk of the trade I'll do this one I got the risk of the trade where I got in my max favor. This is one of my most recent things that I added here. Is my max favorable and my max uh, drawdown. So this is the point at which my trade was the most profitable. This was the highest that the trade went in my favor, and this was the lowest that the trade went against me. Uh, you'll see plenty of stuff later as to where that comes in with charts and other numbers and whatnot. This is where I got out. This is where it was five minutes later. This is the dollar amount at risk, the cents at risk, the net gain, the max profit and loss. This just calculates the uh, total number that I got out for the max favorable series. So you see on this Tesla trade here, I got out right at the top of where that trade. So I pretty much sold straight into strength. Didn't even take a partial on that trade. Just took my 163, totally got out. And this is my minimum profit loss, or I guess, yeah, profit loss. So that would be the minus 14. That's the lows of the trade went against me. This open is for charts that I use later on. We'll get to that. So I got cent return, cent loss, and my R return. The R definitely went over that in my last video, but that's so I'm risking fifty dollars to make fifty dollars, so that would mean I'm risking one R. So if I hit so if I risk fifty and I make two hundred, I got two R. And if I risk fifty and I lose fifty, then I got minus one R. Got a loss win. Um, I don't I can't remember if I added these in or not. I'm definitely keeping track of the time that I was in the trade now. The difference between the R in the five minutes and what my risk reward could have been if I held on to the trade longer. So let's see here. You can see here that I got out at two ninety one twenty cents and the stock went up a whole dollar again after I'd already gotten out. So I could have made an extra um, 1.47 R on that trade, and the difference between that is obviously 11. And the per this is the percent that I could have moved my stop loss up. This is a calculation, basically based on the number, the uh, R number compared to my uh, drawdown, compared to um, what the original risk was. So in this case, my the lowest that the trade went against me was. 1,289.43 and I was risking 289.57 that doesn't make sense I must have got my numbers mixed up there or something but 
Maybe in this case this won't work out. Uh, I got in at 85, and my risk was, oh, I, I read that wrong. I was risking uh, 288 in 89 cents, and the lowest that it went against me was 289. So, you know, there's about 60 cents in there that I was risking that I didn't have to risk. So I could have moved my stop loss up 80%, and I still would have been in that trade. So the kind of trends that I'm looking for is where exactly I can move my stop losses up. So now I'm going a little bit farther right, got my average win, average loss, my profit loss ratio, my expectancy per trade, total number short average, long average, winning percentages, uh, wins loss, total wins, my average return, and my average negative return. In total, I'm keeping track of how much did I save exiting early, so in the case of any trade where my difference would have been negative, saying that I got out on time, that's how much I saved. I saved pretty much a whole 1R. If I didn't take my loss, I would have lost an extra. And this is if I exited too early. So this tells me that I'm not holding on to my trades long enough. It's telling me that I can really hold on a little bit more and really squeeze some more profits out of any given trade. Uh, this is all my strategies, winning percentages, the average win, really just a whole bunch of numbers I'm trying to find a little bit of edge in here you can see let's see post breakout down got a hundred percent on it that's where I'm doubling my size trading down my reversals are about a forty percent so that's not too great what I really want to see for all of these is about fifty percent since I'm risking one to make one uh, the minimum that it needs to be just to break even is fifty percent so in this case, my bottom reversals are doing okay. They're not exactly what they need to be because my average win is bigger than my average loss. But my top reversals here, I definitely need to work on my top reversals. My average loss on a top reversal is $45, which is really close to how much I'm risking on every single trade. So that's already telling me that I need to really pay attention to where I'm cutting my losses at because if my average, if my average loss on a top reversal is at my stop loss that means I'm letting the stock run all the way against me pretty much each and every time which is absolutely not good a bunch of different other numbers here expectancy per strategy average cents per strategy um, back over here I got percent of trades hitting minus 1R so about 46 percent of my trades I believe these are just for losers here about 50 percent of my losers are hitting my stop loss which, I mean, obviously you don't want to ever hit your stop loss, but I mean, sometimes it happens. I think that number's still too big. I'd like to see somewhere around in the 30s for that. Um, there's a reason why I say that, too, because I'll get to that later on through more numbers that we go through here. Uh, percent hitting 1.1.5, 2R. Uh, my trading performance based on the confidence rating that I'm giving it, as well as the time of day. So you can see I'm trading from the hours of 10 to 11 here. I got a I got a bigger than 50% win right here, and you can see 99.30. I'm only about a third year, so that's something that I should be paying attention to. Day of the week, you can see I'm doing pretty good on Fridays, pretty good at shorting on Fridays. My average return for each of those days, as long as this number ends up being positive, it's always a good sign. Um, this is based on my win uh, win rate based on the market rating that I give it. Let's see. If I'm taking any, oh, this is for the uh, reversals. So if I'm taking any top reversals and the market's doing horrible, I'm actually really not doing good on that. You know, you would imagine that would actually work out pretty well because if the market's trying to pull the the stock down, you figure that would help out, but maybe not always. This is my time of day, profit and winners. See, so super late in the day here, I'm up a total of uh, 250 bucks. And in that time here, you see the uh, 9930 where my 33% win rate's at. I'm actually down 330. So I'm not trading too good around those hours. This is the stock price, win percentage on the stock price. So you have taken 22 stocks over 100, when the stock value was over 100 bucks. And I got a 54% win rate on it, so that's pretty good. Same with the uh, 67 here. So looks like for some reason the high below a hundreds I'm not doing that well but doing good in there and then there um, just my short numbers here compared to my long numbers here 
uh, the gap percent of the pre-market location. So going back to way over here where I've labeled these uh, above pre-market high, below pre-market high, and then below pre-market low. Depending on where I take a gap trade, I want to know where it's at in location to its pre-market lows or highs. So you see if I'm taking a gap up and the gap is below the pre-market high, I'm not winning that much. And uh, of course it's not enough numbers. I need to really make sure that I'm keeping track of those. But I mean, you know, I can only take one, if I'm lucky, two gap trades a day. So those are going to go up super slow. Uh, and I think that was about it. And then the rest of the stuff I just now added into it. So this is my moving my stop loss up for each and every strategy. So you see on any high of day or low of day breakout trade, I can move my stop loss up, you know, almost half of where I usually put it at. And that makes even more sense to me because, again, I made a bunch of charts down here. But I'll have to go back to that in a second because I want to keep going through this stuff. Um, so these are my no drawdown trades. On any given trade, sometimes I know my best trades have no drawdown, meaning they immediately work in my favor and they don't turn around, never turn around against me. So these are the these are the numbers behind that. Uh, I should add some more into this one too. But you see my average dollar return, average R return, and if there's no drawdown, I got so got no at no point in this trade am I losing anything. But I can add some more numbers in there and really see pick that apart a little bit more. I added in a share size just to see, you know, what share size I'm taking that's working the best. Uh, looks like I've taken, not doing too hot on, I mean, I'm 0 for 8 on taking 125 and not doing too great whenever I'm taking 250 shares, so that's risking about 20 cents. Now, I don't really know if there's anything behind this kind of number here because just because it's a share size, I mean, I'm always risking 50 bucks, and that always, I mean, the the number of shares that I'm taking on any given trade shouldn't really make too much of a difference as a win percentage or anything, but you can kind of see that there's a little bit of numbers in there that you can kind of pay attention to. Again, anything below 30 isn't really, any, well, I read a, or listened to an audio tape, and one of the traders was saying something like, anytime you keep track of anything in your journal, you at least want a minimum of 30 trades in any given area to really see if there's an edge and whatnot. So I mean, I'm still working my way up here, and I've got, you know, it's August, and I'm not—I haven't taken that many trades. And I've only been keeping track of this one since uh, I think it was late March. So I got about five months of trades in here, and it's still working my way up. This is my time spent in on the win rates. Uh, something that I've obviously noticed here is that whenever I'm losing, I'm losing really fast. And any of the trades that I'm taking that are hold on to longer than six minutes here, they're profitable. But it's kind of the numbers are telling me that whenever, whenever I'm in a trade and I'm wrong, I'm usually wrong pretty fast. So that's another thing that I need to be paying attention to is if I'm wrong and it doesn't look like I'm going to be right, maybe I need to cut my losses a little bit quicker here and save myself some money. If I held my win my winners longer, I would have made an extra XR. So if I held my gap trades longer, this gap trade anyway, could have made an extra 5R. But I mean, this is only... For some of these, I haven't been able to keep track of anything and everything. And I've only gotten... I don't know how many gap trades it is, but... See, my gap and goes almost two, so pretty much all of these I can be squeezing out a little bit more, which is why I'm starting to take my prof or my uh, partials a little bit quicker. Well, not quicker. Starting to take my partials just in general and letting the rest ride for really as long as I can until the trend breaks and whatnot. So another thing I've been working on is my average time in a winner and a average time of winners, losers, uh, gap trades, how long I'm in a gap trade for an average winner. For my gap and go, I'm usually out within two minutes for my gap and go trades if it's going to be a loser. So I know that if I'm holding on to a gap and go longer than two minutes, chances are I might be a winner. These are numbers that i got to memorize. And then this is the big thing that I just uh, went over a mentorship session with um, Merritt Black from SMB Capital. And he really showed me a cool thing going back to this max favorable excursion and max drawdown. So you can make your own candlestick charts. If there's anything that you take away from these spreadsheets, it's making your own charts because this is super beneficial. So every candle has a point in it. 
bring it up here. You got the x-axis. The z is the um, just the stock's name. The low is the max drawdown, the point at which I was at the lowest in a trade. The open is zero. The close is where I exited the trade, and the high was the highest that I was ever positive in a trade. So this is all the trades here. But you really start seeing a big difference whenever you look at the, your winners and losers. So you can see on my winners here, there's a little pattern that you can kind of tell. In a, pretty much all of my winners, the stock barely ever goes $30 or more against me. Any stock that goes $30 or more against me, there's probably... I don't know, I don't have an exact count on this, but it looks like there's maybe one, two, three, four, five, maybe five trades of all of my winners that have gone below $30 against me. So what that tells me is if there's at any point that I'm in a trade and a stock goes $30 against me, do I really want to hold on for that extra 50 for that extra 20 bucks to make it $50, which is my usual stop loss, or do I just want to cut the cut the cut the loss faster and just take the $30 loss as opposed to taking a $50 loss. So whenever I'm trading now, I'm really trying to keep that in mind because that should save me a lot of money, obviously, and hopefully, you know, makes me a little more profitable in the end, but haven't gotten a chance to really try that out yet. I mean, I didn't didn't trade today, so uh, same with the losers. Uh, you can see, I think it was the same pretty much for the losers if a stock's ever uh, $30 in my favor, it ends up being a winner. And then I got my top reversals. I mean, pretty much each and every one of my strategies here. You can see that there's just a bunch of little information in here that I'm trying to pay attention to. Make sure I'm keeping notes on everything. I got my gap trades at the bottom. And then um, doing this, though, was a really big hassle because Google Spreadsheets and making charts is really difficult. You can see I got stuff going all the way to CO. I just made the the gap one down there. It went all the way to DC. Basically, I had to make a pretty junky looking spread table over here on the side because some data misinformation or something. I'm not exactly sure, but if anybody gets to this point in the video and wants some help creating a chart or something, I'd be more than happy to help. These are kind of the just a bunch of little things that you got to go through to make sure that everything's looking good. But that is it. That is all that I got for this time. Uh, if anybody got any questions or something, feel free to send me an email. I'd love to talk about it. Uh, thanks for watching.